Hey guys, this is Mark. In this lecture, we will be talking about conditional statements, or in plain English, it's that if, then, else type of construct. I do remember from my university days, my and that was quite some time ago, my professor was saying that any programming language to be called a programming language needs to have support for conditional statements, assignments, and loops. So it's definitely one of these core elements that you would need in order to program any kind of logic. And after all, logic really implies that you should be able to run a, an if check in your application. And no matter what kind of application you're building, you will be running into the necessity to perform checks. And uh, Codeless is not any different. With Codeless, there is built-in support to perform those checks. There are different variations of uh, conditional statements. And that's what we will be talking about today. And uh, let's just jump right into UI Builder and start exploring how conditional statements work in UI Builder. We are in the UI Builder interface now and to learn how conditional blocks and conditions work in Codeless, we will build a very basic calculator. To get started, switch to the toolbox and drag the block component onto, your, onto the page and then uh, select this block component and change the direction left to right by clicking this button right here and then go to the toolbox and uh, let's start adding individual elements of our calculator and you will need to add them in the following order. There's going to be input component first, then after that it, there's going to be the select component, then you will need to add the input component again, and finally there's going to be a text component. Select the block component, and then go to the justify section and click this button right here just so all the, comp all the child components are nicely spread out and then in the align items click this button right here just so they're all centered. Select the very first input, change the label to x because this is going to be argument x of our calculator and then change the type to number since it will be accepting only numeric values. Same thing for the second input component. Select that input component, change the label to Y. This is going to be argument Y. And then the type to number. Now select the select component. And in here, change the label to operation. And then click for the options, click the change button. And you will need to uh, configure these options. And options is what shows up in the drop down list for the select component. The reason there are two values is that the values that you see on the right hand side is what's actually shown to the user. This is what they, the selection that they make. And then the value is what is how that option is interpreted in the program. So whenever they select, for instance, plus in our code, we will be checking for add. And whenever they select minus, we will be checking for subtract. Same thing for multiplication. They will be selecting the star and we will be looking for the word multiply. Then click the green plus icon and then add the division. And here it will be divide. So these are the values that we will be checking for in our codeless logic. This is what the user sees on the screen. Click apply. Now let's assign data binding because we have configured the graphical part. Now let's configure the actual data binding. So select the uh, input component, which is the X argument, click the logic, and then in the value logic, put an X property, select the operation, go to logic, and then in the value, put in operation. And finally, for the argument Y, click the logic, and for the value, put property Y. Now here for text, that's going to be our result. That's where all the codeless magic will happen. And the way it will work is anytime user puts in or changes value X, value Y, or, or the operation, if we go to the codeless logic for our result label, click the codeless logic, here we see there is content logic. And rather than using data binding, we could actually add logic to calculate the content. And if we click on add logic, 
then right here, the content logic for our result label, it will be invoked every single time when user changes anything in our block because that's just how it works. The re-render happens every time the data model is updated. Okay, because keep in mind, there is data, data binding for X, operation and Y. Every time you change something, the data model is updated through data binding. And then whenever data model is updated, this label right here, it's going to get into this logic as well. That's just how it works in Codeless. So now that we're here in our content logic where we need to calculate the result of our mathematical operation, let's take a look at the logic uh, in Codeless. So under system, there is a category called logic. Click that uh, category. And in here, you will see all the blocks that can be used in Codeless, in your applications, to program conditional statements and basically check logic. And most of them are very simple. In fact, all of them are fairly simple. So here, this if do, we will use that. So you can just dr drag it right into your content logic. And then here, there's going to be our very first check. And our very first check will be to see if the operation perhaps is add. How do we check if the operation is add? If you click on logic, you'll see that there is this block that allows you to do the comparison. So grab this block and connect it to if. So here we will be checking if this empty spot equals to that empty spot. So let's just fill in the blanks. And the very first empty spot is going to be the property that we have in page data. That is operation. So what is this property in page data? Well, that's the property that our select component has data binding for. So anytime user makes a selection in our dropdown component, that dropdown component will record its value into this property in page data. So if this property in page data through data binding is add, and that's basically what this empty spot is for. So let's go to text, grab this text block, and type in add. So there you go. We have our very first conditional statement, which basically says that if the user selected the add option or the plus sign in our drop down, then we will need to execute some logic. So what is this logic that we are going to execute? Well, if you answer it that we need to do X plus Y, you are absolutely correct. And in fact, in here, in this do statement, if you go to logic, you will see that there is actually a return block. So grab this return block into, put it into right here. So in this case, if they selected add, then we need to return the result of the addition of those two arguments. If you go to math, you will see that there is this block that allows us to perform a mathematical operation connected to return but we don't want to return one plus one. These are just placeholders. What we want to return is get property X of page data. And you can actually select this guy, do control C, control V or command C, command V, depending on the operating system. It will make a copy connected to the other one and change this to Y. So this is pretty simple, right? We basically checked if the selected operation is add or plus, then we return value of X, whatever's in the input. We add it to the value of Y and that becomes the result. We can replicate exactly this logic for all other three remaining operations. But you might ask the question, do we just need to grab additional if do? Yes, you could. You could easily do that. You can just do it like this. Or what you could do is if you click on this little gear icon, notice that inside you can grab this else if and connect it to this one. And what we get is this construct that contains these additional blocks. So if it is add, then do this. Else, so select this guy, command C, command V, or control C, control V. And then in here, rather than add, we can check subtract and then select return, command C, command V to copy, put it into here and change this to minus. 
So as you can see, if it is add, then perform this function. Else, if it is subtract, then perform this function. And you could basically continue replicating this throughout multiply and then once again copy this guy and change it to multiplication finally we have tried add subtract multiply so there is really no reason to do another else if because the only other remaining option is going to be divide so there is really no need to check for uh, for that value so in here we could just return division and that will work. Alternatively, you could get rid of this else and just connect this to the return. That's going to be exactly the same thing. I don't like this right here because you have kind of different ways of, of, of handling this logic, but it's going to be strictly a matter of your personal preference. So I will return it to be the way I had it before, like this. So at this point, our calculator is ready let's check how well it works go to preview and let's start putting some values so for example three plus two as you can see the result is five three times two it's going to be six three divided by two 1.5 so as you can see and as i add values the result is immediately calculated which is pretty awesome because that's really the power of data binding so now you have or if you change the operation it also immediately calculates the result so now you have your very first most basic implementation of a calculator the calculator logic if we go back to it is fairly ugly if you ask my opinion so in the subsequent lectures, you will see by introducing some additional concepts like variables, you'll see how much more compact it can get. There's going to be a lot more exciting stuff coming out in the lectures that are there to follow. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this useful. And as always, happy codeless coding.